So on Monday you saw our top five films of 2012. Now we get down to the real business of things. Oh, yeah. We took our top five comic books of 2012. <laughs> Happy New Year! We made it. Yes! It's 2013. Yes, the Mayans were wrong! <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Fingers crossed, eh? Yeah. Um, Some dear. aliens find this SD card in the debris of our old world. Part of me hopes we'll see. that it's something um, that happens Today now. we're doing our top five comic books. Before we do that, there are some rules. Rules. <laughs> so we're <laughs> Go on, what do I need to delete? So we're talking about our top five comic book story arcs, arcs. Because this is a medium kind of meant to be read like that. Yeah, we get the single issues, but really these creators are telling whole stories. And the rule, the main rule is the story has to have finished in 2012. Yes, yeah, so it could have started no, in 2011. But it has to have, has to have finished in 2012. So no death of the family. No. And no rock world. No. But what I want to say with those rules okay. is I want to give a special congratulations to Legends of the Dark Knight. It's been an absolutely fantastic book and yeah. it doesn't have any continuous arc. So I just wanted to give a shout out to that. It was amazing. Okay, do you want to go first or should I go first? Uh, I can go first again. Okay. Let's start off with the lowbrow, why don't we? Um, my number five, you haven't read it, okay. was a mini series mm -hmm. and it was Space Punisher. Uh, yeah, starting off low. <laughs> no, but I absolutely loved this book. And I think something that makes me love this book even more was when I picked it up, I thought it was going to be terrible. Yeah, I thought it was going to re be really bad. And it turned out to be one of the funnest books of the year. Uh, basically, it's the original uh, Frank Castle Punisher story. His family are killed by uh, uh, a mob. I don't know why that. I struggled so much with that. Mob. <laughs> His family are killed by a mob, and he's basically after the members of it, except this mob is the six-fingered hand in outer space. He's got a spaceship with a little robot, and it's got artificial intelligence inside it, and they're like his team. What, you um, didn't think? You, I could have told you that you were going to like that book. True that. Um, but I didn't know that before reading it, and it's all the villains that he goes after are... Uh, Spaceified versions of actual villains. So you That's get a kind a of space saber tooth, space Deadpool, uh, space, space saber tooth, saber tooth, space oh, saber tooth. You, you didn't mean well, it, but it was cool. Uh, and space Doc Ock. Uh, it's absolutely fantastic book. And Spock Ock. Spock Ock. <laughs> What's your number Sorry. five, Dan? My number five is Avengers versus X Men. Now, <laughs> this uh, it wasn't the most technically brilliant series but i think it told a very very good story and it did great things for one of my favorite characters cyclops and the depth that they've managed to give that character i think at this moment at this point is pretty much unparalleled in the marvel universe what i also want to say is i am lumping uncanny x-men and wolverine the x-men in with this well it's all tie-ins crossovers. yeah and, so. and i was loving both of those books and they didn't really get a chance to tell um their or, own yeah their own year. big epic story so i i wanted to give them some credit as well and i think this really is a really is a good series um yeah. i haven't read it yet so honestly i can't yeah. um judge but i no, i it was, there look forward to picking it events up. are very hard and i think they did a good job with this one a lot of time went into it i love the covers i love the yep. designs it's great uh oh, oh, sorry. oh i didn't see anything. looking at my list uh my number four is never look, my, at another man's list. never look at another man's list uh my number four on the list is my indie book and that is saga snap! issues one to six snap snap Hey, I thought you said also. stop as in to go. It wasn't a thing. Um, yeah, one to six, it's their adventure on that planet. Yeah. I would consider that. Uh, and it's volume one. Yeah. Uh, fantastic. Yeah. Such a good book. Beautiful art by Fiona Staples, Brian K. Vaughan, just nails the script. These amazing uh, fantasy sci fi elements combined to get some really weird and wonderful um, concepts that for some reason you just go, okay. 
Yeah. I, I buy this race of people with TVs for heads. Yeah. That's no problem. It was, it, was one of the, like it was one of the first books we reviewed on the show. It, uh, in fact, I think it... Oh, no, yeah. It was in, was it was it, in the first episode. Yeah, and uh, I'll put a link in the description uh, so you can go back and watch a review. But, yeah. Well, they, I'm going to put it up there. <laughs> <laughs> and he's going to make me look like an idiot by not putting it there now. <laughs> uh, but basically, uh, it, it was awesome and, and different and engaging. Yep. And, and all the things, really. And Brian K. Vaughan is a very, very talented comics writer. And uh, selling out everywhere. People are loving it. Yeah. Uh, we're loving it. And can't wait for more. I can't wait for volume two, indeed. Uh, oh, God, so it's me again. Um, my number three is Daredevil. Uh, the mm. Omega Effect oh, okay. uh, is the thing I'm going to lump it in with. Uh, I mean, this book's been fantastic anyway. But the Omega Effect, which crossed over with... Spider-Man and Punisher was absolutely fantastic. We get these, it's it's so nice seeing a light-hearted Daredevil. Uh, he's so much fun, and I mean, I've talked about it a lot on the show, but it's just so much fun, this book, and him teaming up with the Punisher and Spider-Man, you get the, the funny quips with him and Spider-Man, and Spider-Man's like, I don't, I don't wanna work with the Punisher, he's just gonna kill people, I'm not into that. And then you get Daredevil just doing his constant, don't shoot anyone to the yeah. Punisher, he's like, you know, he's the it's moral fun. compass of the pair of them. Um, yeah, it was great fun. I know you actually read up yeah. to there. That was where you got up to, and I, I thought it was absolutely no, fantastic. No, I'm further than that. Yeah? Yeah, I read, that was volume. Yeah, two. Did, volume, yeah, two or three. Yeah, you have read it. You I read, read the it. stuff with Doom. Is that in the same? No, that's after. Yeah, so? Yeah, you've that. read it. Yeah, it was absolutely fantastic. I really enjoyed it, and I recommend it to people to pick up. Uh, in volume form because I'm buying can, the trades yeah. and and they're great and I'm, I'm I'm having a good time with them. Yeah, and beautiful artwork by uh, Paolo Riviera and uh, Mark Wade. Yeah. Mark Wade, it's just a man. Um, so my number three, uh, which I suspect will be slightly higher on your list, is Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo's Court of Owls story. Which, I don't know how he knows that. I, it's crazy. Uh, which I believe uh, is the first 11 issues of Batman. Yes, it is. Uh, big epic story. And, you know, it's about really cool things. Uh, I, I love the idea that it's kind of Bruce Wayne versus his own ego. He thinks he knows the city better than anyone. Oh, well, no, he doesn't. Yeah. And, and I like that. And there is a great issue, this issue that he gets... Stuck in the maze. It was just one of those wonderful moments that I go on about where uh, it could only happen in this medium. And um, it, it's very in innovative. Capullo's art, I love. And it's just a really solid story from start to finish. Like you, it, it, can't, be, it can't be criticized, um, at least kind of tonally and thematically and artistically. Very true. And it's my number two. And I echo... Everything you've said. Ah, you weren't expecting that, were you? No. Ah, oh, freaked him out now. Uh, yeah, it's my number two, and I don't think I need to delve much further into it because I think you nailed all the major points, and the, the Court of Owls was just such a... It's brilliant for a writer, especially in the new 52. It's like we're relaunching, and people are going to pick up this because it's got the name Batman in it. Yeah. And he could have done the Joker, he could have done the Riddler, Penguin, any of those, and he went, nah, I'm just, I'm just going to make someone up, throw them in. And I think it was a very and, bold yeah, move and, and very bold of DC to let him do that. And he bold nailed of him, it. Bold of him to trust Capullo to be able to come up with this, these designs for the talons, which are now look like they're going to be forever in yeah. the DC universe. And it's selling just titanic volumes. Yeah. Like it's flying off the shelves. There are so many. I mean, it's the top selling DC book. Oh, by, by, a by far. And not only that, it brings up all the other books that it crosses over and ties yeah. in with. So... It really is a success commercially and... Uh, Batman. Artistically. Artistically, yeah. Number two? My number two, let me... Oh, I know what my number two is. He knows what uh, it is. My number two, if I'd have kind of tried to preempt my list a while back yeah. and, you know, given a short list of all the books that own all the stories that I'd read, I would not have even thought for a second that this would be mm -hmm. even on my list, let alone this high. Um, Darwin Cook and Amanda Connor's Silk Spectra before Watchmen uh, miniseries is astonishing. It is such an incredible use of the medium. They, it feels like so much 
fun and not just in terms of its theme, that as well, but in terms of two creators just saying, oh, we love comics. We love comics. We just love them. We just love comics. And that comes across on every single page. Amanda Connor's artwork, this might have something to do with the fact that I've seen interviews with Amanda Connor, Amanda Connor and she just seems like the coolest person ever. So that might have something to do with how much I love her artwork, but also it's so innovative. It's so stylish. Yeah. The mother and daughter things are, that are going on are great. But more than anything else, it is one of the most... Yeah, it's the best relationship story I've seen in comics. Full stop. Like, the relationship between Silk Spectre and her boyfriend at the time is so beautiful and touching and familiar and adored it. Adored it. You yep. must get the trade. You must. I, I'd, of all the before Watchmen, I want that and Minutemen. Because Diamond Cook's working yeah. on both. Um, do you know they're great. collecting them? It's going to come in one trade, specifically them two books, Silk Spectre and Minutemen. Hey! That is no accident. That is me happy. Ones, yeah. Oh, fantastic. Right, well, it's number one time number for Number one me. time. Oh, yeah, I don't, you've not been reading this book. Okay. You've not been reading it. Uh, speaking of uh, just amazing storytelling and two people who are just saying, I fucking love comics. Um, for me, it's Matt Fraction and David Arjar, Hawkeye, numbers one to five, in what I'm calling the Purple Collection, because okay. I'm calling it that because <laughs> issues one to five, all the covers are uh, white and purple, and then I know from six onwards, they go red. So, okay. volume one, purple collection. purple collection. No, I like it, it's good. Good, good. Uh, if, editors... we, if we see that on Amazon, like when and the trade it's, comes out and it's the purple collection, we know. We know they've been watching. We want, and I might sue. I ain't gonna have it. I might. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they can have it. I'm just honored. Um, yeah, this book was absolutely phenomenal. I mean, for me, the highlight has to be issue three because the first three are essentially standalones. They all tie in, but they're their own individual. And then the last two is a part one and part two. Um, issue three was by far the standout book uh, where you've got uh, Hawkeye versus the dudes and... Do try not to spoil I'm not going to spoil anything, this. but it was just so jam-packed of comedy, action, witty dialogue, beautiful artwork. I mean, what more do you want from a comic? Yeah, that's all the things. That's all the things. I mean, maybe a bit of horror, maybe a bit of uh, tension, things like that, but, you know, can't ask, you know, you can't have everything. But this book just delivers every single week, I, I mean, every single month that it's out, and it's just five star after five star after five star book. And I know you're gonna get the Yeah, trend. I mean, you got me the first issue from a comic Hunted book Hunted that one down as yeah. well. Yeah, <laughs> he's the comic book hunter on that first issue, but then yeah. I couldn't get the second issue, so I'm just gonna get it in trades, and trade doesn't come out till March, so. Uh, it pains me that it doesn't come out for but that But I long. loved the first issue, I read it three times, I absolutely adored it. Yeah, it's been one of the best books that, it is the best book Marvel brought out last year, by far. So, my number one... I'm excited to know what it is. Well, the thing is... I'm not going to like it, am I? I don't think you are going to like it, but I... I know that when this book was coming out, it was the... It was the it I was, know what it is. It was the first book I read. I, I just... I, I was so excited for it. It made me so <sighs> happy. Um, my number one is the Batman and Robin... Yeah, I knew that was coming. ...nobody story. It's, it will come as no surprise to anyone who's been watching this show for any length of time that I am a huge Damian Wayne fan. True that. And, and as much... I think you've said that every week. <laughs> <laughs> as much as I have... In, as much as I enjoyed Grant Morrison's introduction of the character and as much as I enjoyed uh, Grant Morrison's and Batman and Robin run with Damian and uh, Dick as Batman and Robin, I felt like... Tomasi and Gleason's Nobody Arc, which I believe is the first seven ish. Uh, yeah, seven ish. Seven issues. or so. Um, it was just what I always knew a Damien story could be. Yeah. We got the Batman uh, father and son dynamic that was just so touching and it felt so personal. And also, I think a lot of the reason why I ended up putting it at number one and not two or three is because it has just been looked over. It's yeah. just been... Well, I think it's been tainted a lot by 
eight to now. Like the books since then it, haven't been. No, they haven't. Good they, at all. they they haven't been anywhere near the same standard. To be no. honest, the things that they managed to accomplish in those seven issues is such a wonderful story of morality and of parenthood and just of Damian Wayne being the character uh, and me just kind of falling in love with him all over again. It, I loved it so much. It made me feel so like a child reading it. Like I just, I was so excited by it. It was always the first book I'd read. And yeah, I really, really did love it. I bought all the issues. I'm probably gonna get the trade. So uh, yeah, for, just so I can give it to people and just say, just yeah. read that. It's such, it's a superhero story, but it's about other things. It's about great things. And there's some fantastic images in it. That image there are. of Damien, forgive me father for I have sinned. Yeah. I like, that will, that will stick with me. That will stay with me, that image. I mean, for me, it would be about seven or eight on my list. It was an incredible story, but I think I'm one of these that it was really tainted by what came after. But you can't hold that against it. It's not even the same story, and that's why I think it's important that we did stories. Oh, no, definitely, definitely. And it was fantastic, but I think Court of Owls was better than it. The Daredevil, the Hawkeye, all those, no. I think, were much it was, better. But, it was my hey, favorite book of the year. That's what comic books are about. We all got our different opinions. We all got our different opinions and stuff. <laughs> and stuff. We saw comics on this show, in it. We also talk big issues. Oh, we do. <laughs> talk about a segue. Uh, and we will be talking some big issues on Friday. We're yeah. going to be discussing whether or not comic books should be for kids, who they should be aimed at. Who's the demographic? Who's the demo? We'll see you then.